We are staging a mutiny. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Kim and I are taking over the intro this week. Oh, only the intro? Yeah, just the intro. We're not even going to be in the episode. We're going <laughs> to <laughs> We're going to do the intro mystery detective style and then we're going to bounce. Oh. I thought maybe it was was like a full mutiny like you guys were just going to take over everything. Oh my gosh, no. I'm far too No. I <laughs> I simply cannot handle that level of responsibility. <laughs> we got too many mysteries to solve on our own, let alone your mysteries, Rob. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're taking over the intro this week because we have a mystery detective's present that came for us. <gasps> oh. Oh, so my gosh. Okay. Open I'm it. I'm going to open it. I'm going to open it. Oh, fancy. Oh, there's a card. In okay. honor of the knots we learned and of the naughty mystery detectives, that's K-N-O-T-T-Y, mm. naughty mystery detectives adventure as a whole. Oh, oh, they're chocolate. <gasps> oh, oh my gosh. They're so pretty. They're, I don't know how to pronounce this word. Chocolate. <laughs> you just said it. <laughs> Chequesette. Mm. C-H-E-Q-U-E-S-S-E-T-T. You that said right. so many consonants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me flip it over. We carefully handcraft our chocolate in small batches from fine flavor, sustainably grown cocoa beans in our workshop on Cape Cod. Blending high quality cocoa with the purest ingredients available, we create chocolate that is both exceptional in taste and wholesomely decadent. Oh man, we got we got one for each of us, Kim. Yes. I was gonna say that wrapping is like a map. Yeah, it's gorgeous. And it's got like the little tie on the back, so it looks like a little mystery envelope. Oh yeah. Ah, orange balsam milk. Cape Cod Great White. <laughs> like fish flavored. That's shark flavored chocolate. <laughs> and my favorite. Well fleet sea salt. <laughs> Megan, who sent us all of this wonderful chocolate? Uh well, there was no name on the card, but with our excellent sleuthing skills, uh, I'm pretty <laughs> sure it was penguins from our Discord. <gasps> Thank you. Thank you so much. This is amazing. I'm gonna try really hard not to eat Kim's <laughs> before Please I can don't. get it to her. <laughs> Okay, so I have a question about Mystery Detectives. Yeah. What are you doing this week? We are starting a brand new mystery series called Miss Clue, which we are very excited about. There are six so games excited. in this series, <laughs> and it's it, it's going to be very similar to the point-and-click puzzle-solving Nancy Drew goodness that we all know and love, but with a new cast of characters. Oh. Yeah. Mi- Miss Clue? Miss Clue, Miss yeah. Miss Clue, and- Neither of us have played any of these games. We found out about them a little while ago as we were looking for what were we going to do when we were done with Nancy Drew. Uh, And this is just kind of the perfect transition into something new because we did 33 games of Nancy Drew over like a year and a half. So (laughs) it was kind of daunting figuring out like what's next for Mystery Detectives. Mm. And this was the perfect crossover into doing a new series, but something similar at the same time. Okay. And uh, remind everybody, what time is Mystery Detectives and what day? Hey, Mystery Detectives is available on our Twitch channel every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern. That's twitch.tv slash the crit show. Excellent. I would love to let you both hijack the entire intro, but there's something I dare say even more important than Mystery Detectives that we have to do. <gasps> Those are strong words, Rev. I know. Yeah, I hope I you can back them you. up. We have to thank our new patrons. Oh, that is pretty important. <gasps> that, right? Okay, that is yeah. very important. Listen, I knew the dangerous minefield I was stepping into when I uttered that <laughs> sentence. I would not have said it without the weight to back it up yet. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> to our new patrons who joined us in the month of February, Makina Takana, Tyler Keith, Michael Hoffman, Mist, Michael Robertson, Quantum Toasty, Hayden, Zell 9 Unknown, Jim, Christina Godfrey, Kaylee, Will Morgan, Rasmus De La Rue, and Alex Stowe. Thank you for joining us in the month of February, and thank you to all of our patrons who join us every month. You can find all of the information about our Patreon at patreon.com slash thecritshow, including the fact, in case you missed it last week, that now at the $5 and up tier, you do have access to the ad-free feed. When you sign up, that is not something that you instantly get access to. That is something that I 
personally uh, am copying your email address into the invite once I see it and sending it to you. So if it's uh, a couple hours later than when you signed up, it's all human error. (laughs) It's just me (laughs) eventually getting there. If you have not yet gotten to the ad-free feed, make sure to check your junk mail. Uh, And if it's not there, you can send us an email at thecastofthegritshowpodcast.com to make sure you have access to that. Uh, Also, we have just had our calendar for the month of March come out. Uh, And there are a couple of things that I want to point out. March 14th at 8 p.m., which is a Monday, Jake is going to do a music building stream. Uh, One of the rewards that we unlocked on our Patreon uh, was people wanted to see Jake make some music. So that night he's going to be doing just that over at twitch.tv slash the crit show. On March 17th at 8 p.m., I'm going to be running a one-shot for a game called Definitely Wizards. Uh, You can get tickets for that right now over at thecritshowpodcast.com slash playwithus. Uh, There are five seats available for that. Uh, This is a slightly larger than a one-page RPG that someone sent to me. It is a world where people are magical. But if you are not a wizard and magical, then you're kind of an outcast and you're not allowed to practice magic. But there are still like druids and vampires and all these other people who have some kind of innate magic ability. This game is about you and a group of these innately magic people dressing up, pretending to be wizards, and going through the wizard certification test so that you can freely practice magic. So it's a lot of subterfuge. Um, The art on it is super cute. There's like someone casting magic missile, uh, but you can tell that it's a ranger, and in the middle of the glow of light is a bird that they have summoned. (laughs) This sounds amazing. Yeah. My favorite thing about it is that a type of character that you can play is a bunch of magical familiars inside of a trench coat, which is all that I need to know about this game. Yep. So tickets for that are available over on our website, and I will be running that at 8 p.m. Eastern, Uh, on the night of the 17th. Uh, And then lastly, Kim had such a good time doing her tarot stream that she's going to be doing it again uh, on March 21st at 8 p.m. Hey, yeah, the response to my first one was super positive and people seemed game to do another one. So I'm very excited, looking forward to it. All right, well, I think with that, wait, do you guys have anything else Mystery Detective related? You started off, I hate to sign off without you're okay. Have I checked everything off of the to-do list yet? (laughs) Uh, If you miss any of our Nancy Drew recap from the last three weeks of Mystery Detectives, you can find all of them on YouTube right now. Yeah, you can catch up on all the inside jokes that I'm sure we will end up carrying over into other (laughs) games that will make no sense in context. Uh, It was a really great time going back over all those games. So yeah, go check it out. Yeah, you can find that at youtube.com slash the crit show. We find ourselves on the outskirts of the Witch Meadow Lake campground. In a small crops of trees from a bush, we see the lens of an SLR camera peeking out, looking at a ring of RVs. The camera takes a few pictures. We hear the click and whine of the film, and then it retreats back into the bush. Wallace, what are you doing as you wait for the team to arrive? Uh, I'm just trying to gather intel as much as possible. I am trying to have anything useful I can for the team when they show up. Or if I notice something that like is going to put us on a ticking clock, I want to be able to tell them as quickly as possible so that if they need to divert course, they can. And so I think a little peek behind the curtain, Jake and I are here alone today. Uh, mm-hmm. it's, I know, right? It's been a long time since we've done something like this, and it was with Tass when he was dead. Uh, so we are recording Wallace's experiences before the team arrives Uh, that way i know what has happened to wallace you know what has happened to wallace but the team won't know uh because i am going to hit jake with a mallet (laughs) so that he forgets (laughs) what happens to wallace i was like what as a punishment just for like the hubris of thinking i could play two characters (laughs) no just so you don't remember i see yeah Yeah, no that makes sense it's a it's a very specifically weighted mallet, so it only removes like an hour of time no i've watched cartoons i get where you're coming from If it's birds, we're good. If it's airplanes, we've gone too far. (laughs) If it's anvils, oh no. So you're here now spying on this caravan. What led you here? Like, what was the the mission, the case that you were on that led to you bumping into this group holding Aiden? Several missing persons reports, actually, that uh, some people had gone missing from various places that were fairly close geographically, um, or rather on a line. Mm. geographically uh and so i figured there was probably a correlation and started following up on that and it is several of these minions in this camp so i think that they were 
turned along the way or abducted to be turned uh, into this like vampire cult. Okay, so they're just like picking up folks as they as they go. So the path was like along the roads they're taking. Yeah, it seems like one way or another, these are just people that were in the line of fire, so to speak, as the lady in charge was getting from point A to point B. Okay, so from where you are right now, looking out, um, do you want to try and get to a different location to study their area? Do you want to do it from here? Right now, you're about 20, 25 yards away, uh, just kind of in some brush where they have all circled up. And it seems like it's pretty hard to get an eye on anything meaningful from here. Yeah, they're parked pretty close together, so you can see bodies kind of every now and then. But uh, Is there a particularly tall tree that looks down on the the inner ring of the caravan? Yeah, for sure. I'm going to try to gain some elevation then. Uh, so why don't you give me an act under pressure to climb up this rather large tree and get some photos of the inside of this campground. See, this is my favorite My favorite thing about getting to jump back and forth between these two characters is that what they have in common is that cool is not their strong suit. <laughs> Six. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and re-roll that uh, because I have the postman always rings twice, twice per mystery. As long as you follow your code, you may re-roll a roll. Okay. And it's worse. It's a three. <laughs> So Wallace, you start to climb up this tree and you do get to the top of it and you fire off a few photos, but you notice that as you take these photos, a couple of heads in the ring turn uh, because your flash is on and you see this tall, thickly built red haired woman. She has pale skin, green eyes, and is dressed much nicer than everyone else around her. She barks a few orders at a couple people and they start heading into the forest in your direction. I'm going to hold very still. <laughs> I heard that their eyes are attracted to movement. Yeah. Well, I'm going to try and scurry out of here uh, and, and get away before they catch up. But before I do, I'm also going to use my occult confidential. The first time in each mystery that you observe a monster minion or phenomenon in action, you may ask one question from the investigative mystery list. So even though I've done a bad job observing, I have done a job observing. Uh, so I'm going to ask, what was it going to do? So as you got this peek at the group through your lens, you know, you haven't had a chance to develop and look at the photos yet, but you have seen what you saw through the lens. You notice that there is a Range Rover that is parked in the middle of this ring. And for a brief moment, you thought you saw movement in there. So you imagine that that is where they are keeping Aiden is in the vehicle at the center of this ring. And it seems like they're just waiting. All right. Well, I'm going to see if I can't kind of make my way over to the adjacent tree and climb down from there to try and throw them off of my track. All right. So again, I think this is going to be act under pressure to make from one tree to the next and That's then fine. down. One one way or another, I'm getting to the ground. <laughs> uh, an 11. There we go. Describe this to me. How does, uh, how does Wallace make this Tarzan-esque leap from one tree to another? Creakily. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think he, he finds like a a relatively sturdy branch that's coming off of this tree and kind of works his way out across it uh, until it's like crisscrossing with the branches of a nearby tree and just wiggles from one to the other so that he can climb down on the on the far side of that other tree. Yeah, you do make it down just as a handful of the folks from inside of the ring of vehicles reach that other tree and start looking around, um, but they have not spotted you. All right, uh, I am going to take one of my canisters of film that I haven't used yet, but I'm going to pop the lid off and leave it on the ground at the base of this tree. And then I'm going to try and sneak around well outside through the line of trees to get to the other side where I have a vantage point because I want them to find this and I want to see who reports to who. Okay. So are you trying to get yourself in a position to watch what happens if the film is returned to the camp or? Yes. Okay. Uh, so another another tree climb or I don't think so. I think all of that height was bad for my vertigo. Um, I think I'm going to go under one of the RVs. I'm going to go to the other side and try and creep in underneath one of them. Yeah. Again, I think this is going to be an act under pressure. I, I don't know how to do <laughs> anything else. Um, you know, and you don't get any benefit for acting in your creed, right? You only get something if you're acting against it. Uh, I get a, a plus one ongoing to manipulate someone. And I, I may not be possessed or charmed by any sort of supernatural, alien, or demonic entity or item. Okay. Yeah, because I would definitely say that getting closer to this caravan now that you had another glimpse of Aiden as opposed to, like, 
running away and waiting for the team is acting in your code. Oh yeah, you got it. Children must be protected. That yeah. is my code. I am. I am here for this. That's a ten. As the attention of this group is drawn towards where you were, you make a large loop around. It takes you maybe fifteen minutes to get to the far side of this caravan, not breaking like tree cover. And then you dart in when you see an opening and you slide underneath one of the RVs. Um, I think from this vantage point, you can see the feet and ankles of anybody who's really close. You can see the Range Rover in the middle, and then you can see fully anybody who is at the Range Rover or past it on the other side of the circle. All right. Uh, I'm going to fire up my tape recorder just in case anybody says anything juicy. Okay. Um, And I'm going to try and see when they find that film, who they take it to, and... If I can pick up what words are exchanged, then I want to know what they're saying. All right, give me another investigative mystery. Uh, Eleven. All right, you get a hold two. What is being concealed here? As this group comes back and deliver the film to the very tall, red-headed woman, you notice that they are all very submissive towards her. That almost no one in this camp is making eye contact, talking with her, unless they are talked to. And previously, when you spotted this group, you had the sense that this was a a group of vampires that is working with Nash. But now that you've had a chance to examine them closer, you think maybe she's the only vampire and that everyone else here is human. Oh. And I think you've seen this kind of supplication before. Like, this is very clearly a group of people who have been promised they will be turned if they can prove loyal. And so I think that is part of why you had that initial thought of like, oh, this is a group of vampires. You saw her exhibit some behavior and, you know, a lot of the trails and the markings that led you to this spoke of vampire, but it seems like they're putting on these affects or airs to appear that way out of a desire to be it. Posers. Yeah. Like whenever they talk, they put their two fingers in front of their mouth. <laughs> um, what sort of creature is it? I know it's a vampire, but considering we have seen this whole catalog of types of vampires at this point, and they've all got kind of different ways to deal with them, I want to know specifically which one she is. The woman who is leading this group is a Boven Sith, or a Bovin Sith, or maybe a Boven C. I'm not exactly sure. There are a couple different ways to pronounce it, but it is a vampire from Scottish folklore, a woman who died in childbirth. Uh, and is returned as a type of vampiric fae. The thing that you know about them is that they have the ability to mentally dominate those around them, almost in a motherly way, that everyone around wants to serve them, to please them as someone who would care for them and look after them. Do I know if that's like an AOE effect, or is that like something she's got to deliberately put on somebody? It's something that is generally in the air, but can also be focused. Okay. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to pull out my phone. Yeah. Actually, now that you are closer to this caravan, you get your phone out and there's no reception, which is strange because you had full reception a little while ago and now there's just nothing. All right. Well, while, while I have eyes on this place, I want to try and figure out basically what I'm going to recommend to them when they get here. Like I want to come up with the bones of a plan if they should approach, how they should approach, who they need to deal with first. Like, I just want to scratch out some notes here based on what I can observe. All right, so as you are watching this camp, trying to get a sense of how to deal with the inhabitants inside, uh, roll read a bad situation. Okay, seven. All right, you get to hold one. Man, I, I think, like, I'm trying to take in points of entry and points of exit and threats and stuff, but I think that my code, like, my creed is just sort of overwhelming all that and i think the only question i've really got is what's the best way to protect the victims it has been a long time since you have laid eyes on aiden chambers and the strange thing that you noticed was that it doesn't seem like he has aged at all since you saw him and you know that he has some powers that he is capable that he's sensitive to some things that most people aren't so you imagine that whatever effect this red-haired woman is putting off might be affecting him even harder because of his openness to that kind of thing. So if you could get her away from him, you'd have a better chance of breaking the thrall that he's under. But you imagine that in close proximity to her, it might be even stronger than with most people. 
All right, uh, I'm going to write that down in my notepad, and then I'm going to wait. I'm just going to keep observing uh, until until I think it's about time for the team to be showing up, and then I might try and scurry out of here to figure out where they're going or arriving, or they might make a grand entrance, and I'll be here when they do. So Okay. So as you lay underneath this RV watching the activity of the camp, time passes. You see a lot of the same behavior I described before, the people in the camp giving the leader a wide berth, but if she calls for one of them, they are to her and kneeling before her in seconds. And as this all plays out, you do feel the tug of whatever domination effect she puts off, but because you're following your code, it's just a tickle at the back of your brain and you're able to shrug it off. So you wait and you watch. So after about 90 minutes, there is this moment where the woman with the red hair stands up and looks around and she waves her hand to all of the other people. They go into their various vehicles and as they do, these three figures emerge from the earth. One of them has putrid black flesh. One of them has rotting white flesh. And the last one is a sickly blue. But you do recognize what they are. You faced these before. They are Draugrs. Where have you encountered a Draugr before? I think a couple decades ago when I was out Siobhan's way uh, out in, in Ireland, that in the midst of tracking down like a fey worshiping cult, uh, I stumbled upon a different type of burial ground that I wasn't anticipating that had a Draugr pinned in its casket inside that somebody, and I've never figured out who, somebody had managed to stop this thing and get it back where it belongs, but had not figured out how to finish it off for good. And did it like call out to you when you were there? Like, did it try to convince you to let it free or? Uh, it was like feral. Uh, like, okay. I don't, it seemed like it had been there for a long time. Whoever did it might be long dead at this point. It seemed like it had lost its mind and was just animalistic. Okay. So it lashed out and it growled and it tried to spit bile at me, but it didn't really seem to have the intellect left to communicate. Okay. And as this memory comes rushing back to you, these three are an assault on your senses, both in the way that they look and the way that they smell. And the smell is kind of familiar. It is putrid and rotting. And as they rise up out of the earth, they look around and then turn to face the woman and nod to her. I see you've arrived promptly on the hour, Callista. The one with the putrid black flesh speaks. As agreed upon, we will take the child and our business will be concluded. Very well. Just remember what Grigori promised. All these here are mine to turn and use as I will, and he will not interfere. We have no interest in your pets. Then take him. And she gestures to the car. And the one with the rotting white flesh grins, and a few maggots trickle out from the corner of his mouth, and he moves to the car and opens the door. Uh, I'm going to use a cult confidential again. Uh, this is the first time in this mystery I've seen these things in action. Uh, so, what is being concealed here? The thing that's being concealed here is that while this woman looks on at this group, she seems nervous in a way that you have not observed her behave so far. And when everybody ran into their vehicles, it didn't really register at first, but you heard the sound of things clanking and rattling around. It seems like everybody in the vehicles armed themselves, just in case. So, while this woman has made a deal here, she feels very unsafe, very uneasy. That Draugr gets the door opened, and from out of the backseat of the car steps Aiden Chambers. You have the first really clear vision of him that you have had in over 40 years. Again, he does not look like he has aged a day, but you notice that his eyes are a little glassy, and when he steps out, he is looking at the woman with the red hair and smiling. The Draugr with the rotting white flesh closes its eyes and grows 15 feet high. And it reaches down with its giant hand and scoops Aiden up inside of it. And it grabs its exposed ribcage and cracks it open and sets him inside and closes it back. And you can see Aiden inside of this Draugr's ribcage just holding on to the ribs, looking out. <laughs> this is so gruesome. <laughs> and yet, like, weirdly whimsical. <laughs> and with that, the three Draugrs turn back to the woman with the red hair, and they all again nod in unison to her and sink down into the earth. All right. 
Um, I, I don't know how long it's going to be before anybody else gets here. I need to follow him somehow. I think I want to wait until she like turns away, like goes to collect her people or I don't know, like lets her poise down and takes a breath or whatever. I'm looking for an opening to go steal that Range Rover because I need to move and fast. Yeah, I think that the way that you're watching this situation, that as soon as the three heads of these droggers vanish into the earth, there is a moment where she lets out a sigh and looks to the ground and turns and starts walking towards one of the nicest vehicles there. Okay, I'm going to rush over and get in that Range Rover and fire it up. All right, I think this is going to be an act under pressure. (gasps) Eight. All right, so you're going to get into the Range Rover and do what exactly? I'm going to bust my way out of this circle of RVs. I'm just going to pick a spot where you know they're not quite touching and ram through to to get out of here and ultimately I'm going to call a friend here for some help, but I need to get out of here to give chase. All right, so you can get into the Range Rover and bust out of the center of this caravan in it. Uh, but the vehicle is going to take some damage. It is not going to be operating in peak condition or they're going to get a good look at you as you tear through and your identity is going to be known or a couple of them are going to just start the vehicles they are already in and try to pursue you. I'm a sucker for a car chase. (laughs) All right, so you bust out of this caravan in the Range Rover and two vehicles. I think it's the two that you hit. Um, These two RVs are parked nose to nose and you hit them enough to jostle them out of your way, but you also get them facing the direction you're going. (laughs) And both these RVs, the drivers start them up and just pull after you. (laughs) And so we see you driving through the Witch Meadow Lake campground with these two RVs trucking after you. You said you're going to make a phone call. Yeah, so I have my move the naked city. I have lots of personal contacts wherever I go, um, and I can hit them up for info, which is plus one to investigate a mystery rolls or small favors. So one of my types of personal contacts is the occult like the occult underground so i am putting out a call to get a little bit more info on draugr you know i saw them just meld into the earth i need to figure out how i'm going to track them here i need to know what i'm looking for yeah so what's the name of the person like who are you calling uh chester goggins okay do a chester goggins voice (laughs) who's who's chester hello (laughs) that's it got it in one chester it's wallace Ah, oh, Wallace, you old sack of cats, what you need? I need information on how to track Draugr. I, uh, well, I'm already in pursuit of some Draugr, and I need to know what I'm looking for, because they just kind of sank into the earth, and I'm in a car, and I'm going as real fast, and I need to know how to find them down there. Although, I mean, those things, they, uh, they don't even disturb the earth when they travel. You gotta be very crafty to, to follow them. Well, then it's a good thing I called you. Ah, you're damn right it is. So what you're gonna need to do is you need to find a metal detector. And you just, like, turn it on inside of your car. Because what happens is, and I don't know why, but they leave some kind of magnetic field behind them when they go. I mean, I guess technically it doesn't have to be a metal detector. Maybe if you get a bunch of, I don't know, pencil shavings or something and put them on the front of your car. But that'd be a lot of, like, throw them into the air in front of you. But they're going to leave a magnetic trail. So if you got something that can track that... Uh, maybe even like, like I, I seen you use before your recording device, like sometimes how magnets, they, they mess up, they make it all staticky. You get that hooked up so you can listen to it and you follow the static. You're a genius, Chester. That's what I do. Uh, okay. I'm going to pull out my tape recorder. Hey, wait, wait, before you hang up. Oh yeah. How'd you know I was about to do that? <laughs> I, I just know you. I talked with you enough times. I need you to get me some pictures of them. If you, if you see them again. All right, we'll do. All right. And then I hang up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll pull out my tape recorder and uh, pop out the, the tape that's in it and pop in a fresh one, and I'm just going to hit the play button and set it on the dash and listen for the static. All right, we're all investigate a mystery. Okay. Oh, with the plus one from that move, that's a 10. All right, you get a hold two. Where did it go? All right, so you can get a very clear sense of where they are moving to, so I think that you'll be able to follow, um, and you'll even be able to tell... Like, if they stop so that you don't pass them. Because the static, the hiss coming from this gets louder as you get closer to them. So you can even kind of use it as a uh, a range finder. All right. Bear with me. I want to ask again, where did it go? Mm. But what I'm thinking now is being able to follow its path and having a range finder and like a it's stronger here, it's weaker here. I want to interpolate the destination. 
like, okay, it's clearly going this direction. It's going this speed, blah, blah, blah. Like if I was going to draw a line on a map, where do I think they would be going that matters? Okay. So yeah, you get your phone out and you start looking at the map of the area surrounding you. And there's been a subtle change of course ever since they have been going and you've been following them. And it seems like they're headed straight for the Walden Preserve in Salem, Connecticut. And as you set your phone down to look back to the tape recorder into the road, you glance into the rearview mirror and you see the two RVs gaining on you. And you hear the crack of a high-powered rifle and the back window of the Range Rover explodes in, showering you in a rain of glass. The Crit Show is a Crit Show Studios production, edited and produced by Brandon Wentz with music by Jake Purley. You can find more information about us at thecritshowpodcast.com. To keep up to date with upcoming live shows, contests, and other special events, follow us at The Crit Show on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. For even more weekly content, join us at patreon.com slash thecritshow.